From Babbel, this is a bonus episode of Multilinguish, a show about language and how it connects us. I'm Dylan Lyons. Living in another country can be a life-changing experience. Travel is fun and all, but there's something about settling in and fully immersing yourself in another culture that teaches you things you could never learn from a quick vacation. In this bonus episode, you'll hear from some of our colleagues at Babbel's headquarters in Berlin, Germany. These American expats, Claire, Ted, and John, give us an inside look at living and working abroad, the great parts and the not so great. Let's jump right in. Welcome to the panel, everyone. Thanks for joining me. Um, so I guess to start, I just kind of want to get the background of, of why um, you decided to take the plunge and, and move out of the States and why Berlin specifically. Okay, maybe I'm not the best one to start, but I'll oh. be I'll be honest. Um, <laughs> Good. So before I moved to Berlin, I was volunteering quite a bit on someone's 2016 political campaign. Someone. I'm not going to name <laughs> names, but I said that if she didn't win, that I would move to Germany. <laughs> so. Oh my god. Uh, well, glad you didn't name so names. I, <laughs> not yeah, 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 I'm not going to name names. I've only narrowed it down to two people. Um, but so if I said if she didn't win, I would move here, and I said it to dozens of people. So I sold all my stuff after the, after the election and I moved here with nothing, no job. <laughs> I had to keep your word. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I really did it. So why Berlin? Um, because I only speak English and German. So that really narrowed down the countries that I could move to. And Switzerland's really expensive. And I don't really love the Austrian accent. No offense to any Austrians out there. Um, and Berlin's really cheap. So I moved to Berlin. <laughs> Smart. Wow. Okay, so Claire, I am blown away because you are Thank the you. first American that I have met that moved here for the exact same reason. What? Wow. Yes. First time. Like, every time I talk to Europeans about why I moved here, and they're like, oh, yeah, are there a ton of you? And I'm like, I've never met another. Uh, so, yeah, um, my husband and I were like, never going to happen. This unnamed person will never win the election. And then he did. Surprise, surprise. My husband and I looked at each other, and after like pulling ourselves together, like I guess we're moving to Germany. And the very next morning, my husband was at the German embassy. It's like, I have a husband, I have a kid. Like, what will it take to get us out of this country? Um, so, little grim. My husband's family is Jewish and left Germany um, because of political reasons during pre World War II era. And so we were kind of like, we we're going to take those lessons and I tell parallel out here. there. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So we moved to Berlin. Uh, we like quit our jobs, uh, pulled our kid out of daycare and moved here in less than two months with no job, no apartment, had no connections to Berlin. Actually, neither of us speak German um, and just started over. Wow. Well, I'm really happy we have a connection now. Yeah. <laughs> well, a couple because we, we've like slacked separately. Yeah. So, Ted, you were six years ago. So was that because Obama was elected? Um, <laughs> we're not un- naming names. I mean, <laughs> unfortunately, I think I have a little bit less of a dramatic story than you guys. Um, I, I studied German at university. And when I finished, uh, I was like, what am I going to do with a German degree in the States? Um I suppose I could have been a high school German teacher, um, but that's not really what I wanted to do. Also, I didn't get to study abroad during my studies. And so I thought, all right, I'll go live in Berlin for six or nine months or something like that, do a little teaching, something along those lines, and just got sucked in and still here six years later. Um, but I chose Berlin because I'd been here once before, just for a couple days, um, and I actually have a family member that lives here. And so when I moved over, I had some connections, um, I had a place to stay, um, and yeah, it made the whole process a, a little bit easier. So There you go. All right. That's a, that's a good reason. Um, and I guess, does anyone have any interesting stories about what it was like to make the adjustment here? Was there culture shock of any kind well okay i would encourage people to move to berlin that it's like a thing that you should do in your life but like (laughs) but let me also say that (laughs) it was not easy like i don't know about your guys' experience but like it's a lot of work doing like if you think that 
American bureaucracy is bad, like, wait till you come to Germany. It's like doing your taxes all day at the DMV <laughs> nonstop for two weeks long. The word I would use is Kafka-esque. Yes. Okay. <laughs> like, that's, uh, yeah. Um, one thing for me was I, um, I had to come to terms with the volume of my voice. Um, there were so <laughs> yes. many times <laughs> yes. where it's just like, walking down the street, like maybe at like 10 at night, and people would open up their windows and lean out and go, shh. And I was like, I, but I'm just speaking at a normal volume. Wow. Uh, um, that was a culture shock, definitely. So, you know, we just have so much space in the States. We got to yell at each other all the time. You know? This is what we do. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Anything interesting from you, John? Oh, gosh. In terms of culture shock moments, I yeah. mean, there were a, a lot. I, I guess coming from San Francisco, the biggest culture shocks were actually more around tech. Uh, and like having to carry cash with me wherever yes. I oh went, my gosh, yes. and like heavy coins everywhere, which kind of drove me crazy. Like Berlin felt kind of crazy when I first got here because it kind of felt like I moved ten or fifteen years in the past, and at the same time, kind of in the future because like, oh my god, public transit is amazing. Like healthcare infrastructure, it's amazing, you know. And like, it, in some ways, it's really lovely and you know everything that you would want and so it kind of feels like the future but the this is like a city that never shook the 80s <laughs> yes, um and exactly. so like i can never tell if people are wearing like 80s stuff like um ironically in a hipster way or like that's just like legit what they want to be sporting great um so this is a language podcast so let's talk about it um do you all speak German? How well uh, have you found that um, it's easy to kind of adapt to speaking with people here, et cetera? Um, well, like I said, I studied German before I came here, so I speak German um, fairly well, I think. But actually, my German has gotten worse since I've moved here. Really? Um, yeah. I mean, I was, a, I was an English teacher for five years, so... You know, nine to five every day speaking English <laughs> um, does doesn't do wonders for the German. And then also, you know, going places and you speak German and they hear even a hint of an English accent, and then you they switch right to to English. Uh, and you're like, oh no, come on, I want to speak German. To practice. Yeah. Um, so yeah I mean it's it's still there and it definitely helps living here especially yes. with like what Claire said with the bureaucracy doing your taxes things like that if you don't know any German find someone who does <laughs> <laughs> yeah mm, my Deutsch is so schlecht <laughs> like um, so it's, I mean it's very bad yes. yeah okay. that's what that means <laughs> <laughs> thank you um yeah, yeah, no, like my four year old speaks better German than I do. It's like <laughs> totally embarrassing. Yeah. Mm, but I mean, enough to get by if I'm like really in a pinch and can use my hands to also convey my intent. It sounds like you don't really need it entirely here. Uh, no, I mean, unfortunately, unless you're going to a government office, then no. Claire? Yeah, I would have to agree with that. So I actually liked it. I had studied German in university and that definitely helps a lot. I mean, I love German and I'm really happy that I did learn German, but German is not a walk in the park. Like German is <laughs> a lot of studying and it's a lot of just memorizing rules that don't make any sense. Um, I'm really glad that I did it because in terms of bureaucracy, like everybody in Berlin speaks English except when you go to the visa office for some reason. So like all the times when you need German, you like really deeply need it. So that was that was good to have. I actually want to caveat. I, I do think there is an everyday life where the my lack of German really frustrates me, which is actually shopping for stuff. So I'm one of those people that likes to read the back of whatever I'm buying and like, how do I use this product? What is this even for? And like Germany does have very different sort of like household products and, you know, personal care products that you're like, I don't, is this to clean my clothes or my contact lenses? I don't know. And um, it, it frustrates me to no end that I've lived in this country for two years and I still read like the French if there's like French on the back of the package, <laughs> then I'm like, oh, I understand what's happening here. Whereas like even simple instructions in German, I still don't always get. Um, so that's kind of maddening. 
I actually find that I I'll have to agree with this. Like German instructions on the back of things like for cleaning products, they're written with some kind of German that I've never right. heard in my entire life. <laughs> I'm looking at this. I'm like, how am I supposed to clean my stove with this? Yeah, <laughs> I am constantly afraid I'm going to make some horrible mistake. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna set like my kitchen on my fire. Clothes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes. Do I ingest this or do I put it on my skin? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Unclear. It's, it's a, that's yeah. really unclear sometimes. Yeah. Do you think that? I mean, I guess. It's kind of obvious, but do you think that because you're English speakers, it's you don't need to be fluent in German? And do you think for other people that move here from other countries that speak other languages that it's more necessary that they either speak German or English? I would say English is probably most necessary, um, especially with uh, a lot of the the tech startups and things like that. A lot of these offices, it's the office language is, is English. Right. Um, I have a lot of friends who live here. They've lived here for four or five years. And I mean, they speak enough German to get by, but in like a professional context, they don't really need it. Um, and because it's so international, you know, you're meeting people from all over the place. The, the lingua franca is English. Um, I'd say it's most necessary to have that. That's, yeah, yeah exactly what I was going to say. Like, it's not, I would say, because there's like a bunch of English speakers here, although there are, but it's just like English is the default second language everyone learns. Like all of my mixed nationality couple friends, you know, German and French couples, Italian and Spanish, they speak English with each other. Yeah. Right. Makes sense. Um, okay. So what is the one thing you miss most about living in the United States? And what is the, what is something that you like a lot better about living here? Who wants to go first? <laughs> this could take a long time. <laughs> That's why you have to pick the, the okay, top, okay. top choice. All right. I miss barbecue sauce. <laughs> no <Wow>. joke. <laughs> Very they, specific. They can't do it here. <laughs> they think it's like ketchup with like some pepper in it or something. Oh, no. I don't know. It's, it's and terrible. salsa. And salsa as yeah. well. It's just ketchup with chunks of things. <laughs> it's in just it. all ketchup. <laughs> So like sauces, I miss sauces, you okay. know? Yeah. Um, but something that I really love about living here, um, like John mentioned, like healthcare is really great. That's um, nice. yeah. Working nice. conditions um, and the amount of holidays we get. Yes. <gasps> 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 Say goodbye to 10 days a year. We I don't have... know if I can talk to you right now. <laughs> <laughs> a little jealous. <laughs> I really miss good iced coffee. Oh, yeah. Like it's really hard to find. Um, yeah, I really miss that thing. Something that I never expected I would learn to love here is bread. Like, and when I leave Germany, I really miss like the dark breads of Germany. Huh. Um, Claire's like, no. what are you talking about? <laughs> I hate the dark breads of Germany. <laughs> no. No. I'm also not. A, I'm also not. They're a huge so like fan. hefty and something. I don't know. I'm a total San Francisco granola like kid. Who? Yeah, I love that dark bread. Okay. Okay, this is gonna be a very American thing of me to say. The thing I miss most about America is, like, the goods. You can always get so many things. Like, shopping in America is so easy. Like, Mm -hmm. you can go to a mall. You can go down the street. You can go online. Amazon brings it to you in one day. Like, here, even in the 21st century, like, getting all kinds of things that I need is, like, a thing and a half to do. (laughs) Or, like... Grocery stores don't really believe in keeping constant stock of things. Like you can just like go to the store and like almost all the produce is sold out. And they're like, yeah, that's just how it is for the week. Go to another <laughs> store. Yeah. Um, I love how America has things. There are not enough things that's in fair. Germany. Yeah. I mean, when we do go back to America and <laughs> we're like, buy everything. these shopping aisles are just like, <laughs> packed full of things. Like just the chip aisle, the selection of chips it's in the chip aisle. It's a little overwhelming though. I mean, like, no, it's I, not. I've been here, <laughs> wait, wait a couple more years. You'll go back and you'll be yeah. like, where am I? What do I do? There's too many choices. But also enthralling, kind of like, yeah. you know. For me, I, yeah. beauty products. Like, yes. Ah. There's no <laughs> beauty products in Germany. Maybe because people here are like pretty naturally good looking but like <laughs> i cannot find the brands that i want you can't ever buy a uh, conditioner for curly hair here not a thing i don't know why That's maybe you're not reading your labels right okay and then the thing that uh, probably healthcare. like yeah they look at me like i'm stupid every time i go to the doctor because i still ask at the end do I need to pay anything? And the lady's like, no, you have health insurance. You can leave now. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? Yeah. I have a prescription 
I mean, just to get into the details for people, like I have a prescription that my doctor wouldn't prescribe for me in America because it would cost four hundred dollars out of pocket, and here I can get it at the pharmacy for five euros. It's amazing. Wow. Amazing. If you could give advice to someone who was thinking about moving abroad and working abroad, is there any like specific advice you'd tell them in preparation or when they get here? Anything come to mind? The obvious answer is learn the language. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Way to be a good Babel. She gets it. She really yeah. gets it. You're welcome, Babel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm, I guess I would offer two pieces of advice. So one is like kind of just do it. Like I wasn't expecting to move to Berlin at all. And I've really proven a lot to myself of what I'm capable of doing. So like, why not? Just go for it. And I think... Uh, Berlin also kind of has a reputation of being a tough city to like integrate into. But I feel like uh, we just kind of decided to overwhelm the Berliners with optimism and positivity. And uh, it worked out well for us. And I think you kind of like you chart your own course. And if you decide that it's going to be an awesome adventure, then it will be. You will make it an awesome adventure. Great. Um, I would say come with the hope for the best, plan for the worst kind okay. of thing. Um, I definitely had some pretty awful experiences, um, again, mostly with the German bureaucracy kind of stuff. Um, the first time I went, they looked at me like I was an idiot, and they were like, what are you doing here? You don't have anything. <laughs> and I was like, but what do I need? And they were like, go online and look. Everything. And then come back. Um <laughs> And that was really stressful and yeah. awful. Um, so, so come expecting to for it to not be the easiest thing in the world, um, but that it's going to be a really, really rewarding thing if you can make it work. Great. Yeah. yeah. Have you all found a, kind of a community of expats here that you hang with, or do you tend to just mostly make friends with non-Americans or a mix? Mm, I think it's a mix. I actually have quite a bit of German friends. Because I, I actually really like Germans. That's an unpopular opinion. <laughs> I really like Germans and I really vibe with them. <laughs> but uh, there is like a huge expat community in Berlin. So like it would be, I think it would be kind of strange almost. Like even most of the German friends I know have like lots of expat friends because it's really international. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do think I have a good amount of German friends, but I think it's unfortunate we speak English with each other. Um, but I do think like German friends are, are really great. Like, they're the most loyal friends you can ask for. Um, do have lots of expat friends, for sure. And I expect them to move in about a year. Okay. Yeah, same here. I have an international group of friends. Um, but it is really nice um, to have some of those American friends as well um, because there are things that only only we understand, you know? <laughs> yeah. Especially, I have a lot of French friends and we clash a lot, you know? Yeah. Especially over cheese, you know? Oh, they I don't, don't they French don't friends. they don't believe me that Wisconsin cheese is <laughs> awesome and so we get in fights about that a lot and so it's helpful to have some other friends I have some friends from Wisconsin here and we can uh, we can geek out about Bond over cheese and beer and Wisconsin things like cheese. that oh yeah, yeah you're being such a stereotype I know. <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> um, okay so this final question is a little or it could be personal and you can say I have no idea but do you know what's next for you? Do you plan to stay in Berlin long term? Are you thinking of trying another place? Do you think you'll ever go back to the States, et cetera? Hmm. <laughs> You're all like, I have no well, idea. Considering two, <laughs> well, considering two out of three of us ended up moving here for political reasons. You're like, I we'll think. see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Claire, is that, that your answer? I don't know. Um, it's hard to say because I really do like Berlin, but it's also... I mean, I know it's not my forever city. Like, okay. I like it, but I can't imagine, like, growing old here. I would not want to raise kids in Berlin. Um, but I don't really know where I would go next. That's kind of the thing. So I'm just here. I'm going to do good work for Babel and then see where see where it takes me. Live in the moment. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm a free spirit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a free spirit. <laughs> mm, I mean, I think... Berlin was definitely like a tough transition. And so I could maybe think, oh, I'll go for an even tougher transition and like move to Singapore or Tokyo. No, I I think this is as tough as I want to go. And if I were to move anywhere else uh, in Europe, I'd want to move to a romantic language speaking country where it would be easier for me to get by. 
um, going back to America. Sure. Yeah. I mean, family, I have a kid. It's actually an amazingly kid friendly city. Um, Where do you live? Sorry. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, exactly. Like the whole city is very <laughs> kid friendly. I will say the whole country is super kid friendly. That's true. Um, the playgrounds but... here. Oh, what? The playgrounds here. Okay, they never play on the right parts of the playground. That's what I'm saying. They're <laughs> no. always passing out the best parts. Are you a playground no. pres- prescriptivist? <laughs> yeah. oh. My kid <laughs> loves the playgrounds here and does miss them when we travel elsewhere. Like, sincerely. That being said, for how wonderful it is to raise a kid here, you know, it's tough to be away from family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, that makes sense. All right. That's um, probably the only thing that uh, would make me move back from Berlin um, is it's, yeah, it's hard to be away from the family. But um, like I said, living conditions here are really nice. Pace of life is a bit slower. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I, I don't see myself going back uh, anytime soon. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I agree with you, Claire. I, Berlin, I don't think, is my forever city either. Um, but it depends on where life takes me. So. Great. Love it. Um, any final thoughts? Or want to do a little chant of USA or something? No. <laughs> no <I'm kidding. laughs> Definitely not. Uh, <laughs> great. Well, thanks, everyone, for joining me. This was a really fun discussion. Um, and we'll talk again soon. This bonus episode of Multilinguish was produced by me, Dylan Lyons. Our executive producer is Jen Jordan. Ruben Velish edited the episode with production help from Tom Kruther. Season two is coming this fall. Be sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen. Multilinguish is a production of the language app Babbel. Learn more at babbel.com slash magazine. <laughs>